Okay guys, so we're towards the end of this chapter and this is one of my favorite parts of this chapter because when I was doing my undergrad, I actually took a lot of nutrition courses. So your skin is nourished through what we eat. Like the saying, you are what you eat, so don't be quick, easy, or cheap. That is why it's good to eat a diet. Um, I actually want you guys to look into vegetarian and vegan diets and look at how people say that they have better hair, skin, and nails after eating vegetarian or vegan. I was strict vegan for five years and now I'm not as strict, but when I was vegan and I still am mostly vegan, I noticed that I have had better hair and skin. And you'll notice that a lot of vegans will actually keep their hair um, in older years if you're male. You tend to have less of a risk of male pattern baldness and that's something I've always noticed and heard. So know that um, keeping a healthy late hydration level is very important. This is something that's not really talked about because water is, it's vital for life. You know, people can live without food, but they cannot live without water. And not that we can live without food, but we can live a longer time without food. But if you go a few hours of water, you're not gonna last very long. People will die days without water. There are six classes of nutrients the body needs. Carbohydrates, proteins, fat, water, vitamins, and minerals. And vitamins can be fat soluble or water soluble. And know that if you're taking vitamin supplements to supplement, your fat soluble vitamins are gonna be the vitamins that have a more of a higher risk to cause um, an issue because they're not excreted as readily as the um, water soluble ones. Our water soluble vitamins like vitamin C or um, biotin, we just kind of urinate the excess vitamins out. So do your own research with that and do some um, additional research. It's so interesting to look up how the vitamins work and they function. So we obtain the nutrients through what we eat. Um, the body cannot make nutrients in sufficient amount to sustain itself properly. That's why we're um, heterotrophs, we're not autotrophs like plants. We don't use photosynthesis. Now the USDA, they designed a special pyramid to help us eat properly. You have your food groups such as grains, vegetables, fruits, protein, and milk or dairy alternatives. And if you eat um, the five basic groups in adequate amounts, you will see the benefits of your healthy skin. Go on their website to learn more. And the book recommends to um, you know maintain or improve your weight if you're overweight, if you're underweight, maintain a healthy weight level, eat a variety of foods, eat a diet that's high in fresh fruits, um, low in cholesterol, saturated fats, um, eat a very moderate amount of sodium, sugar, and fat, drink a lot of water, and you want to, if you're of legal age or going to be of legal age soon, keep the consumption of alcoholic beverages to a minimum because alcohol and smoking are the two things that ruin your body and your skin. And you want to balance your diet out with the right amount of physical activity. Do their little activity on the FYI to see how much water you should be drinking. And here's what's so interesting. With dehydration, because a lot of people may be dehydrated and not even know it, I always tell everyone when I was in the salon behind the chair to always take a glug of water when you least expect it because that will prevent you from being dehydrated. Behind the chair, we're doing a lot of motions, we're running back and forth, we're um, blow drying, we're talking a lot. All of that is things that are gonna dehydrate us quicker. Know that mild dehydration will slow your metabolism by as much as 3%. That's a lot. Crack skin on the feet and lips are often a warning sign of dehydration. You can even know that um, with a lot of babies and younger people, if you can lift their skin up a lot, that can mean that they're very dehydrated and that's a sign that you need to get to the hospital immediately. Lack of water is the principal cause of daytime fatigue and a 2% drop in body water can trigger fuzzy short-term memory, trouble with basic computations, and may cause difficulty focusing on a computer screen or a printed page. You'll even know this um, exercising. Hydration, 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 it's so important. Now, make sure you also look this up. You can even overhydrate. If you overhydrate, you're gonna dilute the salt in your water and that's not salt in your water, salt in your blood and that's not a good thing either. So that's why if you drink a lot of water, your body tends to wanna to pee, it wants to get rid of that. Um, that's why those whole contests to hold your pee for uh, money or something are very um, silly. It's dangerous to your health. So know that you can get all the information um, from food on the food label. The government is supposed to do that. Oh, I gotta get... Okay guys, I apologize about that for the little interruption. Um, if you guys are Italian and you have traditional Italian parents, you can totally sympathize with me because you will know that Italian parents will call you at the worst possible time. And this all comes out of love, by the way. Like I love my parents to the moon and back. Um, they will interrupt your videos even though you tell them five times, um, can you guys please uh, give me a few minutes after record a video. Um, and that's why if any of that ever happens in my videos from now on, 
I'm just gonna keep it as is. I wanna keep things real and hopefully give you guys a little laugh because I find that sometimes at little interruptions we learn better. That's why occasional daydreaming is not an issue. And I believe I left right off over dehydration. So um, dehydration, it's one of those things that we are not always aware of it, but there, there's even a really good article. I wish I could find it so I can have like a link of it. I think it was called like the water fix or something and it gave like a case scenario. It was a nursing education note that my friend showed me and it was a story about someone who, um, she was like hitting the wall practically. She felt like she was in a blackout. She felt like she was uh, mentally not there and that was all due to dehydration. I even had a family friend um, who I've known for a while his wife was acting very funny, moody, uh, not herself, and my first thing was dehydration. And it wasn't even being insulting, but sometimes as people get older, they don't always know that they have to eat or drink, and that becomes a huge issue when we're dealing with older people in the future. So, like, let's say, because um, I want to teach you guys life skills too, um, at some point in your career, whether you're owning a salon, owning your own business, or in a whole different field, if you should have to take care of an elderly person, whether it be a family member, a loved one, someone you know, you will know that older people, they tend not to eat as much and then it becomes a problem because older people, they need less food, but more nutrient dense food. They need foods that are more whole foods that are healthier. They have to be extra careful about their alcohol intake if they're drinking alcohol. Um, some older people struggle with smoking still and then you have those that don't always know that they're thirsty. That always becomes an issue. So you have to almost make it like a game and it gets more complicated when the um, older person has either Alzheimer's or dementia. You have to really make sure they're eating or drinking because their mind isn't registering that either. So make sure you're drinking your water. I always say that it's better to get rid of all the soft drinks in your house and energy drinks. Those are so bad for your body and your hair and your skin. Get rid of them, replace them with water. I The one thing I learned when I was going to my um, I go to an amazing skincare class. I go to the uh, aesthetics class and I let them practice on me for facials and treatments. They educated me on coffee and spicy food. If you eat too much coffee and too much spicy food, that can cause broken capillaries, which I have right there and under my eyes. And that was the one thing that almost scared me straight into getting rid of coffee. So I cut back a lot and I actually gave up coffee for Lent. I did a whole coffee detox, a whole coffee cleanse. And when I started drinking coffee again, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was that tolerant to it because I used to have it every day, multiple times a day. I mean, we're talking easily. When I was in college, I could drink um, a Trenta from Starbucks, large one, with six shots of espresso in there, black, and I would drink um, one to three of those daily, which is so bad for your body. So I definitely have learned my lesson with that. Um, I don't drink any soft drinks. I've been soda sober for close to seven, eight years. I don't drink soda, I don't keep that around. I drink water, tea, coffee in moderation, and kombucha. I also want to um, challenge you guys, go visit your local health food store and try some of the healthier um, desserts, the healthier foods, try some of the vegan foods, and even look up the coffee alternatives. There's so many different supplements that you can have that are just as good as coffee but healthier. I actually um, did a review of a cacao drink that was a whole food, so that's always an alternative. Um, you also want to know too that with water comes vitamins, and A, C, D, and E have been shown to have positive effects on um, the person's health with the skin when taken by mouth. Now, if you're lacking in food, that's when vitamin supplementation is important. However, if you're otherwise very healthy and you don't have any special considerations, you might not need to supplement. So it's a personal choice. It's a decision you have to make. There's a lovely chart um, in here. Make sure you read that over. That talks about the vitamins, the structure, the functions of them, um, the deficiency symptoms, and the natural sources. So. I will say that um, when you're in the cosmetology field, some of the most important vitamins that you want to take yourself are going to be biotin. Um, deficiency of biotin is going to be dull skin, depression. No, that, sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. Oh, yeah, I'm reading the right one. Dull skin, depression, muscle pain, fatigue, and loss of appetite. You might even get hair loss. Um, vitamin B12, that's going to give you your energy. You're going to become nauseous without that. You're not going to have um, enough... Um, energy, you're going to feel fatigued, you're going to feel neuritis, and you're going to have nervousness. You're going to be shaking a lot. That can also be a deadly um, thing if you're not taking enough. You also want to make sure you have enough calcium and vitamin D because some of the issues is that a lot of hairdressers are working in the field longer, and as a result, they have to work with some um, health conditions they may get. And one of the big ones is osteopenia or osteoporosis, which is a thinning of the bone. Look up some of the animations on that because it's pretty scary. If your bones aren't healthy, 
your bones have special cells called trabeculae. It's like a honeycomb shape. And if they're too big, you're gonna see the bone um, get too wide and these little structures are gonna bend and break just like that. And that's why it's very important to get a good amount of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients from your food and supplement if you need to. Do your regular physical and do your blood work so you can make health decisions for yourself. Um, know that you have an RDA, which is a recommended daily allowance. If you go over that, it's not recommended. You might actually get vitamin toxicity. Too much of a good thing, too much of a vitamin can be dangerous and sometimes lethal. Too much vitamin A can be very damaging to the liver, um, but too much plant-based vitamin A can turn you orange. So it really depends on the source of the um, vitamin. Usually plant-based vitamins have less side effects if you take too much, and generally animal sources have um, deadly consequences. And that's why if you're eating um, animal liver, that can be a toxic amount of vitamin A. So know that the following vitamins I help the skin. Vitamin A will help the overall health. It aids in repair cells. It's an antioxidant. It improves the skin's elasticity and thickness, just like they have vitamin A and vitamin C serum. So if you're eating it and you're using the serum, it might help a lot. Um, vitamin C is an important substance for repair of tissues. It aids in the healing process. It's very important for fighting the aging process. It keeps the skin healthy and firm. When someone is suffering from a vitamin C deficiency, it's called scurvy. You know, it's really gross. Look up animations. I know people think it's funny because pirates had scurvy, but it's serious. It's a disease that's making a comeback because we're eating so much processed food. It's depleting our uh, minerals that we should be getting through our food. And scurvy, um, you can get bleeding gums, you can lose your teeth permanently, and it can be very dangerous. Um, vitamin D will help you use calcium properly. It's needed from bone development and it helps in rapid healing of the skin. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, your bones will be bad. You'll get um, rickets or osteomalacia, which is the adult version. It's really um, a scary disease. And um, your skin will have poor wound healing. And vitamin E will protect your skin from harmful effects of the UV light. Um, some people claim that if you take vitamin E, it helps heal damage to skin's tissues when taken by mouth. So know that you must um, eat properly, you must drink water properly. Um, you, ch you might wanna check the chart for the vitamins and minerals in the back that will tell you everything. Also know that um, water, your body needs to function. It comp water composes 50 to 70% of body weight, and I know that's a drastic measure. I'm assuming what the book means is that it depends on your gender, your age, um, your condition of health. Some people have more, some have less. The amount of water needed depends on um, body weight and level of daily physical activity. Um, drinking pure water is very important. So read over this nice little vitamin chart. It's important to read all that and understand how this um, helps your health and how cosmetology isn't just about looking good and making people feel good about themselves. It's also about learning about health and it is a science. And in the next chapter, which we will be covering soon, is gonna be chapter eight, Skin Disorders and Diseases. It's gonna be a pretty graphic chapter. I like it a lot, I find it really cool. Um, if I ever teach cosmetology, one of the things I like to do is do a little assignment where you actually make the uh, skin condition using um, edible food. So it's like a gross but cool way of learning um, what things look like. You'll actually learn that too. A lot of people that are doing the fancy cupcake design can do some really gross looking skin conditions, but it also helps you memorize like what the skin condition looks like. And this is gonna be an important chapter to cover because it's gonna build upon what we learned for the skin structure and function. We're gonna take all that and we're gonna apply it to disorders and diseases of the skin. So I will see you guys then.